Hey guys, it's Jess Markowitz, Independent Superstar Director of Jesse's Angels Saving Lives. Um, today's kind of a down day for me, not feeling too well, but um, I got some, an idea of something I should talk to you guys about, and you can hopefully get some ideas of how you will present your um, fragrances to your clients. First of all, I want you to always, um, I want to recommend to go to our Scentsy blog, which is scentsyblog.com, and it's going to educate you on the different fragrances um, and just learn how fragrance is um, created, how they're, you know, the different notes, uh, how they add things to, uh, together to, to complement each other, things like that. But when you're first getting started, it's, there's something that I think, a lot of consultants, even later on, and you know, as you're a seasoned consultant, we kind of forget, is that we are in it for them, right? The customer, we're there for them. It's not about us. It's not about what's good for what we think is great. It's not about what we think smells good or strong or not strong enough. It's about them. And so I want to remind you that there's some do's and don'ts on when you are selling fragrance, okay? Fragrance is very personal because what one person thinks is absolutely fantastic, you or somebody else could not. And when it comes to fragrance, when I said it's personal is that, you know, especially because we now have a body line and, um, fragrance in your home as well is very personal. What somebody's house smells like can be very sensitive. So, um, and most, the reason why most people do buy fragrance for their home is because they want their house to smell good in their eyes and hopefully in people in their guests' eyes, right? So they're obviously going to choose from their preference, but remember that um, it's so easy to want to give your own opinion, right? Um, there's two sides. Again, the do's and don'ts. You definitely want to share your opinion when it's asked. If somebody says, what is your opinion between this scent and this scent? And they ask you specifically as far as do you think it smells, um, which one would you prefer um, between the two? Then you could be honestly say, in my opinion, this specific scent smells better. I like that better because. Now, um, it's so important to not um, say bad things against the other fragrance because even though you, they're asking your opinion and you give them your opinion, it doesn't mean they're going to take it. So um, it means they value your opinion. It's, it hopefully may narrow down their, their opinion but the reason why you decided to choose that fragrance is you may say, I like it because I really like that it, the, the dominant scent that I smell is the citrus. Well, that may be the one thing that's holding them back. Does that make sense? They didn't tell you that. They like everything else about it, but the citrus in it is a little too strong for them. So they're asking your opinion. But when you say, I really smell the citrus in it, they might go, mm, see, that's what I reason why I don't like it, or I'm kind of torn between the two is because this one doesn't have a very strong citrus scent to it. Does that make sense? So we want to make sure that when we're responding, we're responding with respect and in my opinion, because then you're not saying that the other fragrance is bad, and if they go with it, that it's a bad decision and that they have bad taste, correct? Another reason is because we all have a different sense of smell. You may, in your mind, think that you have a fantastic sense of smell. You may say, I could smell, you know, I'm like a bloodhound. I could smell anything, right? That doesn't necessarily mean the way your scent is, is, is going to complement their preference. Does that make sense? So what I mean by that is you may, you may have a fragrance that you personally feel is very strong, okay? Now, because everybody has a different sense of smell, that same scent, you may not, um, the person that tells you, well, do you have something that's not too strong? But if you respond in a way that I'm not going to get let them smell this because I think it's too strong, 
you may miss out on a sale because that same scent may not be too strong to them. Does that make sense? So instead of, um, instead of going by that request or that um, question that they asked, you have something that's not too strong, remind them or educate them that, you know what, everybody has a different sense of smell and what you think is too strong may not be too strong for me. So what I'm going to ask you is, is what type of fragrances do you normally lean to? Can you give me an example of a scent that you use currently or that's already, if, especially if it's somebody that's brand new to Scentsy, that's, you know, what do you use right now? Bath and Body Works, Walmart, whatever. And what is the fragrance? What are you pulled towards? Then they'll say, well, you know, some fruity smell. So then you'll go, oh, so you are inclined to smell more fruity scents. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so you're telling me you don't want it to be too strong, but the beauty of our scent and our wax is, is that our wax can be cut down. So you can use a half of a cube if it's too strong for you. Or if you want it a little stronger, you could always up the, the cubes and add. Now, I don't recommend to add to already warmed wax, but you know, um, for too long, if you put it in, it melts, you can't smell it, then you can add another cube. But if you've used that wax for you know more than eight hours, you don't wanna add to that because it's gonna dilute the scent. So this is about what our position is as Scentsy consultants, independent Scentsy consultants. We need to consult them, we need to educate them and not assume that they understand fragrance, not assume that they understand um, what their own preferences are. So we need to ask them the right questions. Um, like what fragrances do you normally go, go towards currently and what do they, um, what categories do they normally land in? Um, do they have fruit in them? Do they have florals in them? Um, is there anything that you absolutely know you cannot stand from the very beginning? They could say, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want anything vanilla. Or they'll say, anything that's vanilla, I love. So you know how to narrow it down or, you know, to, in a good way, you know, to take it out or to add it in and say, okay, I'm going to grab everything that has vanilla in it. And we can go from there. But that's what consulting is about. Sometimes it takes a little while. It's not about, here's the catalog, tell me what you want, let me write it down and you're gone. Or, um, because this is a lot of fragrances to, to go through. So for us as a, a consultant, it's up to us to narrow it down. Now, a lot of consultants, they choose to go and they, they personally will say, this is a clean scent, this is a fruity scent, this is this. That'll help. But I will say that you may end up, um, you know, when you do categorize it, categorize it that way and not um, the way the, the blah, 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 excuse me, the way the um, catalog categorizes it, remember that um, clean may not be clean to them. What you think is clean may not, they may think it's too perfumey. So just be very careful with that. And um, again, you may feel you have a strong sense of smell or a low sense of smell. I have a low sense of smell and I tell my clients that off the bat. So I try, I, I let them know that I'm going to help you from your experiences and what you tend to go towards. If you have a strong sense of smell, that's great, but that doesn't mean your client does. So that means that um, what you think is clean may not be clean for them, if that makes sense. We, we all have a different sense. Um, you know, what does clean mean to you? If you say, if you want, if you want to categorize it as that. What, tell me an example of what you think fragrance would be if it was a clean scent. They'll normally say, oh, like a linen or, you know, th those are, those are things that people say to me, a, 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 you know, like a bathroom, um, laundry smell. So then that, then you know what they mean by clean. Now, clean may not have anything to do with that. It may, clean may be citrus to them. So you have to remember, because that's what I think of when I think of clean. I think of like a citrus because it thinks of, I just mopped my, um, my, um, my floor or, uh, you know, dusted my, my furniture. So, um, it, it makes a difference on, um, what fragrances, uh, you're going to, to describe. So, um... It made me lose my train of thought. Now I don't know what I'm saying. Um, my daughter just walked in. <laughs> um, let's see. So it's 
basically to, to sum it up is make sure that we're asking them questions and it's about them, not about you. Again, what you think smells good, they may not. And you can lose a client by assuming that something, if you're putting a bunch of fragrances in their nose that you think smells good and they have the completely different scent of smell. And it can turn them off to your products, but you have over 90 fragrances for them to choose from. So before you stick a fragrance in their nose, make sure you consult them a bit and find ask some good questions um, because you don't want them to be picking up a bunch of fragrances that they're not gonna like because then they can go up, oh, I don't like Scentsy, right? And we know that that's not true. It's That's why we have so many fragrances. There's something for everyone. So categorizing definitely helps them. Um, the reason why we put them in the category is because we want to be able to quickly find the description for them. So if you break it down in a different type of a category, category, I still recommend to still put what category in the catalog it is, which is like classics or whatever, so they can find their description fast. Okay. I love you. Um, because you want it to be as simple and as fast as possible of a process because they don't, you know, their time is valuable and so is yours. So you don't want it to be a long process that makes them get irritated and frustrated or even just um, anxious and they kind of just want to wrap it up. So uh, make it as simple as possible by asking them the questions, what they normally go for, why, and what fragrances do you stay away from and why because that's gonna help you narrow things down a lot. Okay, so moral of the story is it's about them, not you. So don't give them your opinion until they ask it and give them a reason why you feel that way so then they can make um, a, a decision. Again, if somebody says, oh, can you choose between these two go, oh, I don't like this one. That's not, that's not the way to make a sale because guess what? This is the one in the back of their mind they might be going towards and you just insulted their opinion. You never want to do that. So just say, okay, well, between the two, even though this one you're thinking, oh my God, I can't stand it. Um, between the two, you just say, well, I actually am leaning towards this one and this is why. Um, and then they can say, okay, well, they can make their own decision. But again, just make sure you're not saying anything negative about towards any of the products because that could be the one that they actually were secretly interested in. And then you just lost a sale and you just um, insulted your client's taste. We don't want that, right? Um, okay, so I'm not gonna beat it over the head anymore, but I just want you to think about that and you'll be surprised how many sales you actually get and how good you make people feel by making them feel important and that their, their opinion is important because it, we're in it for them, not for you, right? In the end, you will benefit. Have a sensational day. Bye.